Hey, what's up, brothers and sisters? Um, welcome to uh, thank you guys for watching that vi the last video I put up. You know, I, I felt like that really touched my heart when I saw the story about that. So I said I'm gonna make a video about it, and I just want to try to explain why I believe that that town and that mall had a problem with that man wearing that shirt, and it really wasn't about Jesus saves. Um, it was really about the deep part of that where we're saying that Jesus is the only way. So we talked about that, and uh, I made the video, um, America, what has America come to, you know? And I decided to make a part two because you know I had a lot to say and I could do it in part one. You know, I don't try to make no hour video because I don't want to try to hold y'all up for an hour because when I make videos, I really want y'all to watch them. So I don't, I don't try to make them uh, too long, right? So this video is called The Real Reason Why They Kicked Them Out of That Mall. That's what this, this video is about. So let's watch this video. And, uh, I just thank you guys for, you know, stopping by, man, and hollering at me, man, and also watching the channel, man, supporting the channel. When I say support, I don't mean money, because y'all know I don't ask y'all for no money. I don't even have nothing set up on there for money. I do this, man, because I feel like I'm called to do this, to encourage the people and let people know, bring people back to God, let them know, man, the Bible's important. Uh, it's, a, it's a person, Artemis. You said on the, on the last video that I posted, uh, you mentioned on how your mom passed. Uh, you know, you touched my heart when you said that. I even, I even talked to about, I even talked to my wife about the situation. But the thing that that really blessed my soul is that you said your mom was a Christian, right? And, and you feel guilty by some type of way, I guess, by the way you treated her. Or if you could have did this, you could have did that. You know, and me and wife, me and my wife talked about that for a long time this morning. So I thought in the beginning of this video, I said, man, I, I, I would address that. I'm sorry. The name is Artemis. I don't know if it's a woman or a man. But, but I'm telling you, I want to tell you this. Because you told me you got a drinking problem. So you know it's a problem. You know it ain't right. This could be a hindrance, the drinking. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. One thing about me, I keep it real. I keep it 100. I'm not finna sit here sugar-coated. I'm not finna, finna play with you. I want to reconnect you with your mom. Your mom, you say, is a Christian. She died. She went to heaven. Well, she's in heaven. She's in a better place. And she can see you right now. So the thing is, if you ever want to see your mother again, do just what God has put in your heart to start reading your Bible and put that liquor to the side because that liquor will be a stumbling block between you and God. That liquor will keep you separated from God. So I'm telling you, I'm just telling you the truth, right? To, to keep reading your Bible, keep praying, put away things that you know ain't Christ-like, and everything that you read in that Bible, you know, do what God say do. You know, just just walk with Him. Find you a church. Start going to church. Make sure you develop a praying um, relationship between you and God. Yeah. So I just want to say that you will, if you follow the Lord Jesus Christ, like He said, you will see your mother again. And when you see her this time, you're going to see her forevermore. You'll always be there with her. So I'm going to continue to keep you in prayer. I'm sure my wife is going to keep you in prayer because I know it's hard to lose a loved one. But I want you to keep in your mindset that your mom, if you could talk to your mom right now and, she, and say, Mom, please come back here for me for another two years. You know what she'll tell you? I'm sorry. I didn't have a taste of heaven. I ain't coming out there for a second. You better get right and get your butt up here. That's what your mom would tell you, right? Amen. So I just want to explain that to you, man. I'm keeping you, man, woman. I don't know who, who, what Artemis is. But um, I'm just keep. I'm going to keep you in prayer. You know, and I pray that God continue to give you the strength because I know that this is kind of rough, right? And I just want to tell you that no matter what in the past that you felt that you may have done to your mom or whatever, just ask God to forgive you. And God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And trust me, your mom in heaven is not holding nothing against you because you don't do that in heaven. Amen. So I just want to share that with y'all. For those of you just watching this channel, keep Artemis in prayer that God will continue to give him strength, give that person strength, and they will continue to walk with God. And on this video, on another note, on this video, the name of this video is the real reason why they kicked that man out of the mall, why they kicked the preacher out of the mall. This is the real reason. If you haven't seen this video, make sure that you go look at that video right there. Look at that video, watch that video first, and then come over here and watch part two. God bless you guys, love you guys. Here's the message. <laughs> Ain't that what the Bible teaches us? The Bible teaches us that Jesus is the only way. That's what the Bible teaches us. Look at this. That Bible is the same Bible that the President of the United States 
on the day of his inauguration puts his hand on that same Bible when he gets sworn in. That's the same Bible that when a police officer or even witnesses uh, put their hand on or get sworn in to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in the United States of America courthouse. That's that same book they put their hand on. That's the same Bible that America was built upon. That Bible teaches us that Jesus is not one of the ways. He is the way, meaning the only way. You don't believe me? Let's look at this. Look at that. Look at John. Chapter 14, verse 6. It says, and this is Jesus speaking. He got his disciples around him, and he, he's promising them something. And let me tell you something. The same thing he's promising them is the same thing he's promising us. Because we're also disciples. We're disciples of Christ. You know, a disciple is a, is a student. Is, 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 uh, uh, is, is somebody that's learning. And we're all learning from our master, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So look what he telling his disciples. Look, look what he promised his disciples. He said, let not, we're in verse 1. He said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, you believed in God? Believe also in me. Same way you believe in God, same way you believe in me. He said, in my father's house. Who's his father? God. Where's God's house? In heaven. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. This is the promise that the Lord is giving to them and he's giving it to us. He said, in my father's house, in God's house, which is heaven, there are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He said, if it were not so, I wouldn't have told you. Because number one, I ain't no liar. You know, if I tell you this, it is what it is. That's basically what he's saying. He said, I go to prepare this place for you. And he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He's coming back. He came in the New Testament like they said he was going to come from the Old Testament. And he promised us that he's coming back. But he's not coming to walk on the land. He's not coming to gather us up and start talking and preaching and stuff like that. That's done with. We have the word of God for that. When he comes now, we're, this is where we, people call it the rapture. The Bible don't say rapture. I'm going to say what the Bible says. It says caught up. When he comes, he's going to come back in the cloud because the Bible said when he comes back, every eye shall see him and even those that pierced him. Everybody's going to see him in that cloud. But we that are that are saved are the only one that's going to be caught up with him in the air. And the reason why he's pulling us up out of the out, out of the earth is because he's about to destroy the earth and everybody in it like he did in the days of, of Noah. Yeah, Sodom, like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroys two cities, this time he's going to destroy the whole world at one time. And this is the purpose of being saved. He's going to call us, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to uh, bring us out of that. He's saving us from that wrath of God, from that great day, the day of judgment. He's saving us from that. That's why it's important to be saved. Now listen, and he's the only one can do that. But look what he says in verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, which is in heaven, there you may be also. Okay, let's look at this. Verse 4. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. He's letting them know, oh, you know the way. Because they've been walking with him for a few years now. So he's letting them know, oh, you know the way. You know not to follow this person, that person, that person. He knows if you won't follow anybody, you won't follow me. You've been following me all this time. Keep following me so you know the way, right? But one of the one of the disciples called Thomas. This is down Thomas. This is the one that said in the book of uh, John, in the end, he said that he don't, when the disciples saw Jesus, after he died, he appeared before them, but John, but Thomas wasn't there. And Thomas told them, well, I don't believe when the disciples were telling him, hey, man, we saw the Lord. He stopped by here today. He said, well, I'm not going to believe until I see the, 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 the nail prints in his hands and in his feet, you know. And uh, that's when he, Jesus revealed himself to him later on. And Jesus told him, blessed are you because you have seen, but more blessed are the people who have not seen and still believe, which is us. Amen. We're more blessed than Thomas. They called, they gave him the name Thomas, Down Thomas, because he's the one, if he don't see it, he don't believe it. But the Bible, Jesus tells us that we got to walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Anyway, Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? So he's asking a question. He want to know. I don't know how you've been walking with him all this time, and you don't know the way. But <clears throat> and that's how some Christians are. You know, but he says... How is it, you know, he said, he said, whether thou goest or how can we know the way? Okay, that's a good question. Jesus got a good answer. Look what he says in verse 6. Jesus says unto him, I am one of the way. Is that what Jesus said? 
That what you see right there? I am one of the ways. I am one of the few ways. No. Jesus says, I am the way. The way. Meaning that that's the only, he's the only way. He says, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man coming unto the Father, no man can come unto God, but by me. Wow, boy, that is powerful. See, that that's what offend people. That's what get people all, all hurt, you know, get upset, you know, they're in their feelings. Because Jesus says, this is, this is why all this stuff about all these different religions, all roads lead to heaven, that's a lie. There's only one road that leads to heaven, and that's the path of following Christ. You can't get to God, you can't get to heaven by being a Muslim, by just following Prophet Muhammad. Or, or following Allah saying you don't need God because the people who say they Muslims in their Quran it says that Allah has no son so that book right there let me know that's not the book of God that wasn't that wasn't directed by God because it's contrary to what the word of God which was before that book says it says that God so loved his so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so in that book in the Bible he is like it's it acknowledged that God has a son Right? God <clears throat> spoke out of heaven while Jesus was on earth and people down there heard it. And he said, this is my beloved son in, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. So God testified himself that Jesus was his son and this was told to multitudes of people and they wrote it in a book for us to read, for us to know that God has a son and his son name is Jesus and, his, and he says, hear ye him. He tells us to listen to him. So if we got to listen to him, what, do, what does his son say? His son says, I am the way, the truth. And the life, and that no man come unto the Father but by me. So that's what this man had on his shirt. Jesus is the only way. He told the truth. That's what the Bible says. That same book that the president put his hand on when he's being inaugurated. That same book that the that the police officers and witnesses put their hand on when they swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God in the court of law. That's the same book that this country was built upon. That's why this country was so blessed. And now you're going to get mad because I tell you what, what the word of God say in that book. You get offended. Why are you getting offended? Because you, an, you have embraced another religion. You saw what we just showed you on the thing. These people are from Iran. These are Muslims. And majority of the population there is Muslim. He went against the grain. He went into the wrong territory, which in their eyes is the wrong territory. But he went into this dark place to let them know that Jesus is the only way. He's letting them know, hey, Allah can't save you. Muhammad can't save you. Farrakhan can't save you. Buddha can't save you. Mary, the one that they call a virgin after she got six kids, can't save you. The only person that can save you it's Jesus. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus. Jesus himself said in that book, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man coming unto the Father but by me. He let them know nobody can go to God but by him. You can't go to him through Muhammad or Farrakhan or no other way. You have to go through Jesus. For you to be a Muslim and believe in that book that tells you the lie that God, that Allah has no son, which is God, Allah means God, you saying God don't have no son, that book is a lie, and you cause to believe in a lie. Jesus is the way, he's the only way. No man comes unto the Father but by him. That's what the book said, that's what the word of God said, that's what God's son said. Look at this one. 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 3. For this is good. Look what he said. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, I say. In other words, he said, okay, what I'm about to tell you, this was, this was coming up. Let me tell you, before, before I even read what the word of God said, I want to let you know that this is good. And this is acceptable. Look what he said. In the sight of God, I say. What I'm about to say, this is acceptable of God and I say. He says in verse 4, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So it's God's will that everybody be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. 
He wants everybody saved. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's another scripture that we don't talk about. But the scripture says, he that believeth in him shall not be condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. If you don't believe in that word, believe not just say, yeah, I believe Jesus. No, that word believe me, trust me that you got to trust everything he said. You're not going to let a uh, Quran tell you anything different. You ain't going to let Allah tell you everything different, anything different. You ain't going to let Muhammad tell you anything different. You ain't going to let that Elijah Muhammad for the, for the nation of Islam tell you anything different. You ain't going to let Farrakhan teach you anything different. You ain't going to let Buddha teach you anything different. You ain't finna sit here and follow the Pope. Going down the wrong path Worshipping Mary Which you're not supposed to do You're supposed to only worship Christ You know what I'm saying You're not going to let anything deceive you If you know the will of God He says who will have all men to be saved And come unto the knowledge of the truth Now look at this This is what's powerful Look at verse 5 I don't see this on people on the back of people t-shirts. They got the John 3.16, and that's cool. But let's get a little deeper than John 3.16. Look what he says right here. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. It said, For there's how many God? There's one God. Look at that now. And one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And look at that. <laughs> that's why I love the word of God, boy. That's why I love the word of God. Look what it says. It said, For there's one God, and how many mediators? You know what a mediator is? A mediator is like an attorney. You know, you have, okay, say I could, remember I went to jail, right? So I was the criminal a couple of, few decades ago. I was the criminal, right? Then I get a lawyer who's not a criminal. Then you got the judge who's not a criminal. So when you go into the courthouse, this is the way it's designed, right? When the judge is there in the court, I can't just say, I'm gonna walk up. You know how you see, Lawyers walk up to the bench and they, you know, they have a conversation with the uh, with the uh, judge. I can't do that. You know why? Because I have a line. I can't go across that line. Why? Because I'm a criminal. I'm not a law-abiding citizen. The only people who could come across that line to that judge is the law-abiding citizen. That's why the court reporter could be there. The officer of the court could be there. Could go across that line. Could go up there. And my lawyers, the attorney, and the prosecutor, they all have the right to go up there to the. But I can't go up there. Why? Because I'm a criminal. So that lawyer is a mediator between me and the judge. That's why, and you whisper to the lawyer, hey, tell him I want a bond. Uh, Your Honor, uh, the defendant is requesting a bond. See, the, the judge are listening to him, but you don't hear nothing from me because I'm a lawbreaker. Okay, that same principle is the same way with heaven. God, who is the judge of all earth, right, sits on his throne. We, before we came to God, we were sinners. We don't have the right to go approach the throne of God because we're lawbreakers. We're sinners. We need a lawyer who's who's a law-abiding citizen that will speak up for us. And who is that? Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus sits on the right hand of God. Why? Because he's the mediator. He's the mediator. Not Mary. Not Mary. Not the Pope. Not Father Frank. The Bible says, the word of God says, for so there's one God and one mediator. One, not two. It didn't say there's one God. Oh yeah, there's two mer two two mediators, and then later on it's gonna tell you the man Christ Jesus and his mother Mary. No, S scriptures are are are, cl are clear. If you're say if you're saying anything other than that, you're leaning on your own understanding. You've been taught wrong. You've been deceived. The Bible says, for there's one God and one media between God and man, the, and it tell you who that is, the man Christ Jesus. Just in case it didn't leave you to try to figure out who this is. It tells you, the man Christ Jesus. That's the mediator. So Jesus, like the preacher had on his shirt, it's the only way. It's the only way. Look at this, 1 John chapter 2. My little children, we're in verse 1. These things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, an advocate with the Father, and to tell you who the advocate is, Jesus Christ the righteous. He said, he said, listen, he said, I'm gonna write to y'all, don't sin. Because you know, people like to say, well, you know, we ain't perfect. God know we're human. You know, we're gonna always sin. So you setting yourself up for favor. You, you don't always have to sin. You don't always have to do that. Right? You do that because you choose to do that. You like to do that. You ain't fasting and praying to be delivered from that. Right? Now. He's telling them, if, but he's letting them know. 
because it's possibility that you can't make a mistake, right? He says, but, he said, if any man sin, he said, I want to let you know. In other words, if any man break the law of God, we got a lawyer. Who the lawyer is? It ain't Johnny Cochran. This lawyer is, a, is only one lawyer that's appointed to us, and that is Jesus Christ. So he letting you know, if you break the law, don't worry. I got a lawyer. I got a good lawyer. He'll get you out of this. You got to confess to him and let him know Let him know what you did. Come clean. Don't try to take it to trial. Plead guilty. God, I messed up. Uh, I did this wrong. And this lawyer is going to go be on, on your behalf. And trust me, he'll get the judge, which is God, to forgive you for what you did. Only one person could do that is Jesus. That's why Jesus says, no man coming unto the Father but by me. <clears throat> so we see that? <clears throat> Look at verse 1 again. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Look at this one now. So the advocate is Jesus Christ the righteous. It says we have an advocate. He didn't say we have a few advocates. He said we have an advocate, meaning one. We have one advocate. It's only one. And I'm going to tell you who that one is. Jesus Christ the righteous. So it's Jesus. Not Muhammad. Not Farrakhan. Not Elijah Muhammad. It's Jesus. Jesus is the only way. That man was right what he had on his shirt. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read 4, 5, and 6. Look at this. He said, there is how many bodies? He said, there is one body and one spirit. Let, let me explain that to you. When we come to Christ, we are now grafted in, and we're all in, the ones who came to Christ, we're in that same body. We are in the body of Christ. And he's picturing a body, right? You have the body right here. Guess who's the head? Guess who's the head of that body? Christ. Because Christ is the thinker. Christ is the one that we should be following. You know, because if you if you say to yourself, if this comes across your mind that you want to use a bath, you, you got to go use the bathroom, automatically your body gets up and you start walking di that direction to the bathroom to go use the restroom, right? Because it all comes from your mind. A mind is a powerful thing. So in this body, what God is trying to show us, we're all in this body. Some of us is arms, fingers, legs, toes, whatever. We're all in this body. That's Christ. The, the Christians, the ones who accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. There's only one body, and we're all in that body, and Christ is the head of that body. We ought to follow that head, that body. Amen. So he said there's one body and one spirit. Notice how it says a capital S. That spirit is talking about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, right? And it's, so in this, it's only one Holy Ghost. He said, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Look at this now. Look at this. One Lord, one. How many? How many faith? One faith, one. So when you look at religions, right? You got this person saying, "Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a Sunni Muslim." All right. Sunni Muslims have their faith in the Quran and also Elijah Muhammad and other little prophets. That's what their faith is in. So that's their faith, right? So then you got. You got the Shia Muslims that has another faith that's going in a different direction. This is why these two don't come together and worship and pray together. This is why they're at war with each other over there in these other countries. They don't see eye to eye because this one got this faith and this, and this, and this one got this faith and that. Okay, so those two separate faiths. Same thing with uh, Nation of Islam. Okay, Nation of Islam is also saying they self that they're Muslims, but they they don't share the same faith that. Sunni Muslims do and Shiite Muslims do. All three of them saying they're Muslims, but all of them have three different faiths. And that's the same thing with, with, with Christians, right? You have, you have, this is where this is where everything get out of whack. It's the same way when you have the Lutheran, the Lutheran church, you know, they, they got faith in this particular thing. You got the Presbyterian church, they got faith in this particular thing. You got the Catholic church who have the same Bible we do and the Bible that teaches us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that there's only one God and one media. The, the Catholic church, the Pope, and the priest in them is teaching their congregation that Mary is the mediator. You can bow down to this statue and talk to this statue, Mary, still call her virgin, even though she has six kids, call her virgin and, and make a request to her to talk to God or to talk to Jesus, right? But that ain't what the books say. So this is what they got their faith in. But the Bible is telling us that there's one Lord and there's only one faith. 
And what faith is that? You, we ought to have our faith in Christ Jesus and everything that Christ had told us. That's where our faith should be. Why? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man can come unto the Father, no man get into heaven unless they come through him. Amen? Oh, oh the Holy Ghost teaching today. This ain't me. <laughs> Holy Ghost, God wants you to know this. He wants you to know the truth. So, so we see... So we see that the Bible really does teach us that Jesus is the only way. That same Bible teaches us that there's only one faith, even though you got a gang of other faiths, you know, and they and people say that all roads, all those faiths go lead to heaven. No, it's not. That's a lie. You've been tricked by the devil. There's only one way. So I got a message. For America Stop getting offended When you're told the truth Jesus says In the book of Matthew Chapter 11 verse 6 He said blessed is he Who is not offended in me Mary Will not lead you into heaven Joseph Smith Will not lead you into heaven Martin Luther will not lead you into heaven. The only person that can lead you into heaven is Jesus. He's the only way. So the preacher was right. He was absolutely right. He told the truth. And the people in that city, the people in that town, and the people in that mall got offended. They got hurt. Their feelings got hurt. They got angry. Why? Because they heard the truth. And what was the truth? Jesus is the only way to God. I'm Joe the Street Preacher. Thank you for spending time with me. I'm going to see you on the next upload. God bless you guys. America, America, God at one time has shed his grace on thee. America, every day you're getting farther and farther away from God. This country was built on Christianity. That's why God blessed this country because we accepted his son, Jesus, and made a decision to follow him. Other countries were Catholic. They were they was following the Pope. They was bowing down to statues of Mary, statues of Jesus. Some other countries were Muslim countries. And if you look at those countries, a lot of those countries are cursed. A lot of those countries are not beautiful like America. A lot of countries all around the world is not like America. America is a blessed country. That's why everybody and their mama is trying to get to America because everybody around the world could see that this country was blessed. We was blessed because we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We had church churches on every corner our parents and our grandparents and even our great great grandparents and so forth went to church and took the children 
to church with them. Everybody in the household went to church. Jesus was talked about at the dinner table, at work, at the grocery stores, and even on the street corners by the street preachers that God placed there. That's why you see churches in every neighborhood. Because we as Americans was following the Lord. But America has stopped following the Lord. America has turned their backs on God. America has forgotten about God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Do you know what God says about a nation that has forgotten about their God? In Psalms chapter 9 and verse 17, the Word of God says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forgot God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is serious. America, it is time to repent.